part two of etching a knife. Today I'm going to be looking into etching with an electrolytic reaction. Uh, basically you pass a current through salt water, um, any different types of salt will work but I'm going to be just using regular table salt um, and basically this will etch off the material we want leaving only the material we've masked off with various different forms of masking. Um, certain things I've learnt, for example, the cathode, when doing this reaction, it is always better to have the cathode the same size as the actual thing you want to etch. So I'm actually just going to use another blank knife as the cathode, which is the, on the negative, and then on the anode, I'll have the one that we're actually etching. So first off, I need to get a container with some water in it, so that'll be my first task and then I'll be adding as much salt as I possibly can to it until it won't dissolve any more salt in it. So that's my first task, let's get on. Right, I don't normally give like big warnings when doing things like this, um, but I'm gonna give you a warning now. In this video you'll see me use a glass jar to do the etching in. That is not a good idea. This etching process um, releases hydrogen. Hydrogen is highly explosive and if you've got it in a glass jar you're going to be picking bits of glass out of your face for months if not years if you're lucky enough to survive. Also make sure you do it outside, just get it in a well ventilated area. Um, I had both my windows open and there was no one else at home etc so you know I, I did it as safe as possible. But that is my warning, you know do what you like, if, if you listen you listen, if you don't you don't. It's up to you but thanks for watching, let's get on with the fun stuff now. Okay, this isn't going to be the best view to view this from, but I can't find a better a way to do it. So I'll, I'll do it like this for a bit of it, and I'll, I'll change the view in a minute. Right, I've got my water. I've put it in an old coffee jar. It just makes uh, mixing it a lot easier. And now to add my salt. Now, as I say, I'm just using normal table salt, but I could use various different ones. And if this becomes the best me method for etching, then I might actually experiment with different salts but we'll have to see. Anyway, I'm just gonna pour in a huge amount. And now I'm gonna mix it all up. And this will eventually go clear. And then um, I'll add some more. I'll just keep doing it until it won't go clear anymore. I may have added enough already, you know. This, this definitely isn't an exact science. Okay, I'll leave that for a few minutes just to carry on dissolving. Okay, as you can see, it's cleared up a lot. Let's give it a good shake. I'm going to add a little bit more. Again, I'll just leave it for two minutes. Okay, that's done. Now I've got to set up the equipment to be able to get this etching. We need to have a power source and some wires. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna um, use a 10 volt power supply and I'll have my multimeter set up next to it so you can see all the power and so on and so on. So I'll, let me set that up and I'll be back. Okay, so I've set the whole thing up. I've got the cathode on this side, which is connected to the um, negative. And I put a little black bit on and we've got the black here, just so you know that that's always gonna be the negative. We've then got the um, anode, which is the positive, connected to the knife I want to etch. This here is just blue tape I've put on so that we can remember which one's what. So I'm actually going to have different coloured insulation tape on each knife just so I've got a reference to remember which one's etched how. 
I'm going to be setting a timer as well so that we can just verify how long it's going to take and, it, um, and so on. Let me find my timer, there it is. Okay, so basically, oh, and this is the voltage here, just um, going through. I, I'm, I've decided to do 5 volts, not 10 volts. So, let's start up. There you go, bubbling has started on the anode, the negative side, which is how it's supposed to be. And we'll see a rapid change in the colour of this water. In fact, at the bottom I can already see some green appearing around the knife. The side I'm etching is actually facing towards the anode, so this side here is the one I'm etching. Whether that will make a difference I don't know, but for the um, for continuity I'll do that with all of them. I'll leave that for about five minutes and then I'll have a look again. Okay, so I've turned the power off because I want to check the how the etching's going, if at all. Now as you'll see it's covered in this nice gloop. That's its scientific name. Not really. Okay, I'm only going to dab it so I don't want to take anything off. Like for example, if you have a look without even dabbing it, the CD writer has pen has disappeared. So has, it looks like, so has the, uh, one of the marker pens. But, I'm only going to rub here. There is definitely some etching going on. Can you see the difference in the, the reflectiveness, reflectiveness? The reflectivity of that. Okay, I'm going to put it in for 10 minutes now and see how it gets on. Again, I'm facing the thing I want to etch towards the cathode and I will do some filming from this angle so you can see all of the bits and pieces. It instantly fills up with some... It looks like green algae. I was, I'm assuming it's not. But um, yeah, it fills up very quickly with this. Um, it looks genuinely almost a natural like byproduct of say a really really dirty fish tank um, but yeah I'll show you from this angle in a minute as well right put that back that way and we'll start again now
Okay, so that's had 15 minutes. Let's check it now, shall we? There is a definite amount of yuckies on there. So, one thing I can tell you from looking at it right now, there is no... Let me move this out of shot a second. And this. There is nothing left of the any of the pen at all. You can actually still see it though slightly. I'll show you properly in just a sec. Now the tape has started to peel up, so whether that will have had bearing on it I don't know. But, let me try and get this in shot. You can see the two lines, still. And there is the faintest J still there. Can you see that in the camera? So it did work to some extent. Obviously, if we carried on, I think we'd just slowly start to lose that. But, there is quite a big difference between the thickness of the... Um, the nail polish, if you can, if I turn that like that, you can actually see there's thickness to it. Now I'm wondering whether to put it in for another 10 minutes or not. I don't know. Do you know what? I'm going to put it in for another 10 minutes. See what happens. Now. I should have used a bigger container than this, and it should have been plastic. I'm going to put a warning at the beginning anyway, but, you know, don't, don't do it with glass. Okay, so that's done, hopefully. Let's get it out and have a look. Um, okay, like I said, there is definitely some peeling of the edges there.
Okay, let's make some room. Okay, so this is the um, the cathode. And there's a little bit of blackening on there, but I actually think that's just on the surface. And that's on that side too, but it's it's very, very minor, nothing really wrong with that. And then this is the one we're wanting to etch. There is definitely um, some etching gone on. In fact, bits of the metal is still peeling off as we speak. So let's peel this bit off. Look at that. That there is literally about a millimetre thick. No, less than a millimetre. But there's definite notice, you know, that you can definitely see that. Right, I'm going to get some um, nail varnish remover and we'll remove this, some acetone. Okay, so we got that off. Let me just show you how deep it is. I'm going to try and zoom you in so when I turn it, you can actually see. Now, if I start to turn it, you'll be able to just see how deep that is. No, it keeps losing focus, doesn't it? Quite incredible, isn't it? So I'm just going to rub this with green sponge if I can find it. Little touch WD 40. I put this cloth down, I just don't want it all over my bench because it will stink for day. Well, over my cutting maps, it will just stink for ages. Not that I mind the smell of WD-40, but it's just another strong smell. You know, I've got acetone in this. Right, now let's give it a wipe. Look at that. I reckon that looks properly beautiful actually. If you have a look, you can sort of make out the J and the two lines, but nowhere near as, you know, as thick as this or as the actual um, nail varnish. So I've got to say the nail varnish by far was the best. Um, it was the easiest, the quickest to apply and as I say, the sides of it were starting to come up on this one. So I, I think for uh, electro etching, um, I'd always go with the nail varnish. Electrolytic etching is so far my favourite results, but it's my first result. So we'll go on to the next one, which I think is probably going to be um, ferric chloride. But that will have to wait till tomorrow or the next day, because I'm going to have to go and pick up my kids. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon. Bye.